Hi, I'm Chaz from Aptable, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a basic Java web app on the Aptable platform. We're going to be following along from the, uh, the Aptable Docker Jersey example repo. This is a quick guide for uh, deploying a sample Jersey app, uh, a Java application using the Jersey web framework on Aptable. Um, we're going to, to try to track uh, the Jersey setup guide. In the Jersey setup guide, they have a Maven archetype for Heroku web apps. Aptable is very similar to Heroku in a lot of ways. So uh, just to get moving really quickly, we're going to sort of bootstrap off the Heroku deploy model. Um, I'm going to assume uh, that you have Java, the Java compiler, uh, Maven, and the Aptable command line tool all set up. I'm also going to assume that you have a dev account and have an SSH key uploaded. So here in the Aptable dashboard, I can see I have a dev account. Um, it's called Aptable Sandbox because I'm actually running it in the Aptable staging environment. Um, and I have uh, my user and an SSH key properly configured. So uh, getting back to the, uh, the tutorial, the first thing you're going to need is some code. So there's a couple things you can do here. You can either uh, uh, fork this repo and use the code that we have um, or you can generate your own code uh, you can use the maven archetype uh, generator in the Heroku example in the Jersey documentation um, our codes a little different we tweaked it to say hello Aptable um, but you can you can start with your own source code you can generate a new code from an archetype or you can fork our code here um, either way the most important thing once you have your code is that you're going to need to add a file called a docker file um, to your repository. Your docker file is a configuration file that tells uh, docker which is the engine that we use to build and run your code a docker file tells docker what to do. So here we're starting with a really simple docker file we say uh, specify a base image and the base image is going to be the Tutum build step, which is uh, basically a replica of kind of what Heroku uses to build applications. And then we're going to expose uh, a port in that container to the uh, to the outside. Um, if in a in a, a more sophisticated Docker file, and probably a Docker file that you would use in production, you would actually uh, specify the base image um, and then uh, and then do some more sophisticated. Uh, configuration. So right here in, in build step, what build step requires is a separate file called a proc file uh, to specify the processes that you want run by your application. Now it, for Heroku you need a proc file uh, but in a more sophisticated docker file we would just specify the process natively in the docker file. So the, uh, the, the thing to do here is to make sure that we have a docker file. It's in the root of our repository it's called Dockerfile, capital D, no extension, and it's committed to code. So here, let's just check, uh, see if it got, this is our current ref, this is the latest commit, and there's a Docker file, so we're good to go. Um, you wanna make sure that that's in your, in your uh, version history so that uh, we can pick it up and build your application from it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is provision our app. There are two ways you can do this. Uh, if you have the Aptable command line tool, we can uh, create an app from the command line. Just Aptable apps create, and then we're going to give it a handle. And the handle I'm going to give this one here is just Docker Jersey example. Um, so we're going to do that. And because we have two accounts, we may get an error here saying multiple accounts are available. Please specify with account. So you can see here we have a development account and a production account. What I what I want this app to be created in is in the Aptable Sandbox account. So what I'm going to do is run that same command with the account flag and then specify the handle for that account. And now when I do that, I should uh, create a Docker Jersey example app. And if I refresh uh, my page in staging, I'll be able to see that now we have a Docker Jersey example uh, app. The other way to do that is just to create an app up here in the, uh, in the corner of the account flag. So when I have the Docker Jersey example app up, I can see that the app doesn't have any services configured yet. And what that means is that right now, this is just a placeholder. I've just told the Aptable API 
that I want to reserve uh, this namespace for this application, but we haven't actually told Aptable anything else about the actual application. In order to do that, we'll need to uh, push code to the Aptable API, and then uh, the Aptable service will build and run that code, and then we'll have a running web app. So the the next thing we need to do is actually push some code. And to do that, we're going to have to configure a Git remote. Um, so here, uh, because I'm running in staging, mine's going to look a little different. But what I'm going to basically do is uh, I'm going to check the remotes that we have listed. And I see I got an origin and upstream. So I'm going to add a remote called Aptable. Uh, Get remote add, and I'm going to give it a name, Aptable. And the, the what you would do is you you would say uh, you get at beta dot um, and then you specify the uh, the handle for the application right here. Again, it's just Docker, Jersey example. Uh, dot get. Um, and you would, that that's the correct endpoint to add for you. Now mine's going to be a little different, but I'll just uh, I'll just add this here. And, and so now I have a, a remote configured called Aptable. Now I'm going to go off screen and reconfigure this uh, because uh, my endpoint's a little different. But that's the way that you would do it in real life. Okay, so now I've got my remote properly configured, and I want to push some code. I'm going to get push I'm going to push, push the master branch to the remotes master branch now we always have to push to the remotes master branch but you can uh, specify a local branch so for example if I had a, a dev branch that I wanted to push up to a staging environment I would be able to take the the local uh, dev branch there and push it to the master but here I don't need to do any of that I'm just pushing master to master and so when we when we initiate that push, uh, what happens is y the get endpoint looks for your SSH key. Uh, it starts the session, pushes the code. Um, you can see it authorizes, initiates the deploy, meaning it identifies that you've reserved an application uh, namespace in the Aptable API, and then it kicks off the build process. And so what's going on uh, right now is that it's uh, downloading all of the uh, assets and resources it needs using the Tudem build step uh, process. And that's all coming from this Docker file, and then the build step image is referencing the proc file uh, when the app actually starts. So here's a bunch of information about uh, we've provisioned services, we've uh, set up health checks on containers, we're provisioning a vhost, uh, it's creating a new elastic load balancer in order to route traffic for that. And we get a message that says the deploy succeeded. That's great. That's fantastic. Now, if the deploy had failed, uh, we would have information in the logs here. And we would also um, probably want to configure logging for this uh, account in order to get even more information, the information that may not be available in the in the blog streaming terminal. And so here we can see, um, this is a separate tutorial, but you can see where you can configure a log endpoint for your applications um, and your accounts there. Um, and so here, now when we go back to the Docker Jersey example, we can see that we have a web service. Uh, this is the service. It's, it's just named web because this is what we named it in the proc file. We could have an arbitrary name for that, but it's conventional just to call that web because this is going to be our web server. And we can see that we've got an automatic vhost, and it's provisioning a load balancer. Now, when that load balancer is done provisioning, uh, we'll be able to route traffic to that um, automatically. Now, we have a, a default vhost uh, name created here, just onaptable.com. You can use that, or what you can do is, when this is done provisioning, you can take the uh, load balancer and uh, address and add that as a CNAME record uh, to whatever uh, domain you want, and you can route directly to that load balancer. So this is going to take a sec because we have to spin up a new load balancer, um, so I'm just going to wait. Okay, now this still says it's provisioning here, but if I check the vhost, I can go to 
there we go so this is the vhost and I know that this application doesn't actually have anything at the index I get a 404 but I'm getting the jetty 404 which tells me that I'm on the right track so if I go to the right endpoint I get the hello world message and that tells us that the not only did the deploy succeed but that the networking to the outside internet is working as well so that's the basic example um, to recap what we did is we did uh, some initial setup both on your local dev machine and on Aptable um, we had some code we added a docker file we made sure the docker file was committed in version control we provisioned an application in the Aptable API we added a git remote and then we pushed our code to the Aptable API in order to trigger the build the build uh, successfully built and successfully deployed the application and we got successful networking to the outside so that's it that's how you set up a, uh, a basic uh, Jersey web app for Java using um, a Maven archetype and uh, Docker and Aptable.